Well, right there, you're looking at a ghost town, everybody. That's a pile of old school house down in the weeds now. And the only thing left is the cistern right there. There was never a well. It was always the cistern. And the old timers tell me that they'd get a new cup every year for school. And they all come, all the kids would come and stick their cups along the edge of that cistern and drink out of that cistern all school year long. And uh, that's how they took care of it back then. So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about water in a dry land and uh, what I could do on my uh, off-grid waterless cabin. Well, and here I am in front of the historic uh, Kovar Catholic Church. So that's about the same era as the, uh, the uh, <laughs> now missing Kovar School. But both of these things are the same in that they have a cistern that sustained uh, both the church and the school. So we'll go around. We'll take a look at this 100 plus year old, uh, 120 year old cistern and we'll see if it has water in it. And it, it's catching it from the square foot, which I'm going to guess, uh, oh, is about 2,000 square foot, about the same as my house. So we'll see if it has water in it and uh, we'll take a look. Maybe I'll see if I can get the pump running. Well, here we are in front of the Kovar cistern, at 1934. So I, I see I can't get the pump going because they've locked it. <laughs> hey, but let's take a look down inside there and you'll see that that's a full cistern. Alrighty, let's see. I'll zoom, zoom, zoom. We'll see if we can get the, the water in there. There we go. Got a reflection. Alright, well there's the camera in my reflection. So you'll see that the cistern's full right to the top so let's take a look well I hope in that little reflection that you could see the cistern is almost to the top of this drain pipe right here so that's a uh, going on a hundred year old cistern that's been there still holding water and uh, I'm gonna guess that it's six foot around uh, I'm gonna say 12 15 feet deep it's a fairly deep one so you're talking three four five thousand gallons of water in there all during a drought this is year two of a drought and uh, all from a 2,000 square foot roof so that that's how the pioneers were keeping uh, their water out here so uh, I think my idea of getting there uh, is the same uh, good idea when I looked at some of the pioneer wells in the area the average well is down about 380 feet for modern wells but the old wells uh, the inch and a half wells that are on old farmsteads they're down around uh, 80 feet and down at the valley close to the river it's even 40 I saw a 40 foot well <laughs> that's very unusual in Texas very unusual so but a cistern is the way to go and uh, I'm happy to do that and I'm going to build my cistern above the ground so that I can use it a little more convenient than a, a hole in the ground but uh, listen that's a hundred year solution uh, of water right there that's still doing water I mean if I was a thirsty man I could remove those wood planks and get out of there and drink but obviously I'm not going to so but uh, you know there you have it so you can have water in a dry land even during a drought um, just from rain water but you can't have a lot of water you can't have reliable water and you're dealing with the cistern so if your cistern something falls in it and dies then you're dealing with cleaning out a cistern so um, you know that's that's why everybody shifted over to wells they were more reliable but as we head into this uh, next phase of humanity where the Midwest aquifers are collapsing and the California aquifers are coll collapsing gathering our own rain rainwater and holding rainwater on our own property to recharge uh, zones will be really important so anyway that's what I wanted to talk about today uh, let's next I got to get all my animals watered so the next thing that I'll be working on will be the animals setting up my um, gutters again for my horses so if you take a look at this you'll see that I'm not drilling or, or putting any holes inside the connex to put these gutters up they're actually held up with magnets and uh, both the uh, long magnets like for tool racks for screwdrivers as well as a couple of hundred pounders in between each section um, I'll talk about a little more I've done some other videos on that but if you need temporary watering this is definitely the way to do it so I've got a couple of uh, angle brackets you use for welding I just set the um, 
uh, the aluminum up there, which isn't magnetic, right? The magnets are going through the aluminum to lock it all into place. But the magnets under there provide a little bit of support. Now this is only blown down twice in hurricanes, so uh, if I put even stronger magnets up there, it wouldn't be a problem. But for my horses, I like to have clean, fresh rainwater instead of them always drinking out of a stock tank. And, but when the cattle come up, they uh, drink it all up. Uh, <clears throat> cattle are very thirsty creatures and then leave my horses with nothing. In addition, we are still in a heavy drought condition. So uh, it took me about 15 minutes in real life for me to put the gutters back up after I painted this. So uh, I just snapped two of the angle brackets on the, uh, on the uh, metal frame put up the uh, aluminum gutter and then on the top you can't really see I've got a whole bunch of uh, magnets on top of the container and then I'm feeding those back down through the edge to lock it in place so uh, the last piece that I did I've already taken and put in the uh, the gutter downspouts as well as the end caps uh, fitted all these in place at one point in time so I've taken this gutter up and down a couple times and then I angle it over to the baffle system and uh, this way, when it rains, I can catch all of the uh, I can catch all of the rainwater. And uh, what you did see there is I had a slight uh, angle. I started right up at the top uh, with the first sheet, and then I'm dropping uh, one or two inches. I just eyeball it. Uh, you could see that I'm looking down the edge. Uh, ultimately, when I get done putting those all in place, I go back over them, and like I'm doing right now push the joints into place. Sometimes I tape the joints um, or silicon caulk them if I'm feeling like it. Sometimes I don't. The, this day I just tape the joints uh, inside uh, because I might end up taking this down in, in the near future again. So this is a super uh, convenient way to take care of uh, livestock. And I, I mean, as a human, if I wanted to catch water in there, and if I had a filtration system, I would. Now, I'm a dry cabin, so I'm still trucking in water. Um, and I don't want to mess with the big filtration system. I don't have a lot of space yet. So, um, you know, I'm trying to just live small. Now, I'm not a big fan of drinking out of plastic and bringing in plastic jugs and, and whatnot. But that's where I'm at in life, and I've accepted that as uh, one of the things. So, here you go. I'll talk about it more. All right, this took me 15 minutes in the stop motion to run it all together. And uh, first I just put them up loose and then I scooch the seams together, clip and I, you know, push them together. Sometimes I tape them, over tape them, that's fine. This is aluminum tape right here. And then I add these magnets all the way up and down. At the end where the wind can get a hold of them, I put extra magnets at the end. And honestly, this thing withstands everything and uh, I catch uh, about 380 gallons per inch of rain. So that's probably true. This is a 40 foot container, 40 by eight. So there, your math is probably the same math. Check it out yourself. So on the end here where it all comes in, and if you look closely, you would have saw, I almost have a two inch drop from there to here. So the water will come down at a pretty good angle, but I have uh, this baffle system where I can adjust, you know, right now it's set to refill this stock tank, uh, which I really want. There's nothing here for the horses. They have to go up and use the stock ponds. Uh, then I have this construction IBC tote that I fill up. It's all the way full right now. And then a optional barrel run. So I could shut off any one of these and force the water to the next side. And then uh, I just move barrels in and out as I want them full. This is for the chickens. And this is my next water project. It's full up uh, 30 gallons of chicken water. I got this at uh, Goodwill for uh, eight bucks. So the spigot was missing. So I had to put a new spigot in it. I just opened that up and used a, a clicky to reach way down in there and put the spigot in. It was just fine. It doesn't leak, as you can see. So I'll be moving that over the chicken coop, setting that up. But this baffle system, it's at a slight angle. And then the shipping connex, you can't tell, but it's at a slight angle feeding that. So I'm trying to catch more of the top without having to put an extra gutter in on this side. Uh, and that's just because this is storage right now. The, you know, one inch out of angle doesn't matter to me. It would if it was a kitchen, it would bug me. So uh, when I turn this into my galley kitchen, this end will be a galley kitchen, I'll, I'll straighten that out. But for now, I'm capturing all the water from the top. When I'm all the way done, these will be poured roofs. 
and they'll have canalis on the top and the canalis will run down and go into a cistern that I'm expecting to put in here and that's where I'll put my 5,000 gallon swimming pool uh, and or uh, we'll go take a look at some of the other cisterns in the area uh, make an in-ground uh, circular cistern that I can store water and I'll just dig that out if I need to but right now the uh, with earth bag and the um, above ground pool that's my idea because maybe I can cool off with my own cistern <laughs> Again, I don't use much water. <laughs> the average family in the United States, uh, I think they use four persons, use 38,000 gallons of water a year. Most of that's uh, with uh, toilets and showers, as well as outside irrigation. Since I don't irrigate, I don't have that problem. Since I don't, I have a composting toilet, I don't have that problem. So, uh, and then I field shower for now, and my field showers are no more than a gallon, uh, military style, <laughs> you know, showers, and I'm clean. So, uh, but anyway, uh, 5,000 gallons is more than enough. This will catch 30,000 gallons a year here in Texas if I get the 37 inches of rain that I'm supposed to get. So, uh, you know, I, I've got an extra surplus of water for me. Uh, but a family of four, they would have a 8,000 gallon deficit. So they'd have to cut out uh, long showers or they'd have to cut out uh, irrigation. And then they'd be able to make it with two shipping containers and a 20 foot roof over them. Right now, I'm only catching 380 gallons per inch and I've been in a drought. So we're not even getting 37 inches. Last few years, we've had about one quarter of that to a half so anywhere between uh, let's say 8 to 10 inches to 15 inches it's bad